Hi folks, this is the solution for uh, 12D from part A of the Unit 3 assignment. So they want us to sketch the graph of this function here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our uh, three major steps. So part one is the information that can be gotten from the function. Okay, so this is what I expect to see on a test. So uh, here, let's start with the domain. Okay, so since we have the L and X, uh, we know that X has to be strictly greater than zero. Okay, so here if we're looking for x intercepts, uh, well, what makes this expression zero? So if x equals zero, the whole thing would be zero, but that's not in the domain, so we can't include that one. And we know that when x is equal to one, ln x will be equal to zero, making the whole thing zero. So we have just one x intercept. Okay, for y intercept, well, we have none since, of course, x can't be equal to zero. Okay. Uh, now let's take a look at um, the uh, end behavior. Okay, now here when we look at the end behavior of this function, uh, we're definitely going to consider as x approaches positive infinity, but we're not going to consider as x approaches negative infinity since it's strictly greater than zero. But we are going to consider the limit as x approaches zero. Okay, so we find out what happens on the left end of this function. So limit as x approaches positive infinity. Okay, well, you have the product of two uh, expressions that are both growing very large. So here, that's just going to be approaching positive infinity. <clears throat> but when we look at the uh, limit as x approaches zero from the right only, okay, so here now we've got two competing functions because you have x squared, which is approaching zero, and ln x, which is approaching negative infinity. Uh, but we know that x squared takes over from ln x, okay? So x squared is approaching zero faster than ln x is approaching negative infinity. So the end result is that our limit will be equal to zero. <clears throat> Won't be defined at zero, but it does have a limit uh, as we approach zero, okay? And so let's just determine the sign of the function. Excuse me. So we're only interested above zero, and our only x-intercept is at one. Okay. So if I take something like 0.5, well, this is going to be positive, but ln of 0.5 is going to be negative, so it's negative between zero and one. And then if I take something bigger than one, well, this is positive, and um, ln two uh, will also be positive. Okay. So there we go. That's the sign of the function. So let's move on now to the information that can be gotten from the first derivative. Okay, that's step two. So y prime will be equal to, okay, so here three is just a constant. So in fact, I'll just write that as three times the derivative of x squared ln x. So we have derivative of x squared is two x times ln x and plus x squared times the derivative of lx is 1 over x. Okay, so here, what do we have? We have 2 ln, uh, sorry, 2x ln x plus, and here, that x cancels out with that one there, so plus x. Okay, so <clears throat> here's our first derivative. Let's determine when it's equal to 0. So the 3 is already uh, factored out, so we need to factor out this thing here, see when this expression is equal to zero. So there is a common factor of x, uh, and here we've got 2 ln x plus 1. Okay, so yes, x can be equal to zero, but we know that that's not in the domain of the function, so x equals zero is going to be eliminated. <coughs> so 2x plus 1 uh, can also be equal to zero. So let's solve for that. So 2 ln x uh, equals negative 1. Oops. So ln x equals negative 1 half. Okay. And the inverse of ln x, of course, is e to the x. So x is equal to e to the negative 1 half. Okay. Which is approximately equal to, let's figure that out, uh, e to the negative 1 half is about 0.61, well, we'll just say 0.6.
Okay, 0 0.6. Okay, so let's test whether this is a uh, local max or min. Okay, so again, mention nothing less than 0. So here's 0 0.6. So I'll pick 0 0.5 and I'll pick uh, 1. Okay, so if we take a look at the um, uh, first derivative here, well, 1's an easy one because 2 times ln 1 is just 0 plus 1, so that's positive, times 1, another positive, so it's positive here. Okay, so for 0 0.5, let's stick that in our calculator. So we've got, um, so x is 0 0.5 times, um, what do we have, 2 times ln 0 0.5 plus 1. Okay, and we see that we've got a negative value. Okay, so derivative is going from negative to positive, so that means that we've got a min at x equals 0.6. So let's calculate an approximate y value. Okay, so let's stick that into our equation, which is 3 times x squared. So 3 times 0.6 squared times ln of 0.6. So that's approximately equal to negative 0.55. Okay, so we've got our zero. We've got our uh, <coughs> local minimum. Let's now go and work on the second derivative. Okay, so I'll call that section three. So the second derivative, which I'll take from uh, this expression here. Okay, so again, three is just a constant. So let's take the derivative of 2x ln x. So derivative of 2x is 2 times ln x plus 2x times the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Okay, and then plus the derivative of x, so that's just plus 1. Okay, so here we've got 3 times uh, 2 ln x. x is cancel out, so I'm just left with 2 here plus 1. So plus 3. Okay, so there's my second derivative. And let's look for any points of inflection. See when that's equal to 0. So when 2x, 2 ln x plus 3 is equal to 0, uh, that's where we may have a critical, uh, we may have a point of inflection, sorry. So 2 ln x equals negative 3. So ln x equals negative 3 over 2. And this can be solved as e to the negative 3 over 2. Okay, and let's get a uh, approximation for that. So e to the negative 3 over 2, 1.5. So here we get approximately 0 0.22. Okay, so let's see if that's a point of inflection. So remember, we have to stay above 0, so let's take 0 0.1, and again, let's take uh, x equals 1, so that's the easy one. Since when we put this into the second derivative, 2 times ln of 1 is 0, plus 3 is 3, times 3, so that's all positive. So let's now stick in 0 0.1. Okay, so the 3 is positive, so I'm not even going to bother sticking it into there, I'm just going to stick it into that expression, 2 times ln of... Uh, 0 0.1 okay, plus 3 is equal to a negative number, so that means it's concave down. So we're going from concave down to concave up, meaning we do have a point of inflection at 0 0.22. So let's determine an approximate y value. So 3 times 0 0.22 squared times ln of 0 0.22 gives me uh, oh, but negative 0.22. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have all the information needed to uh, solve, uh, sorry, to graph the function. Okay, so in terms of structure, well, I have an x-intercept of 1, I have a local min, and I have a point of inflection, and these are all very small numbers. So in preparing my graph, and I'm just going to do it by hand here, I didn't prepare... A, um, I didn't prepare a Cartesian plane. So here I'm going to have the um, 
let's say go up 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that'll be x equals 1. Okay. And here my y values that I have to work with are all negative. And again, they're quite small. So negative 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So negative 1. Okay, so now let's uh, plot our points. So <clears throat> we have our x-intercept is at uh, 1. Okay, we have our minimum at 0 0.123456. Okay, and the y-value negative 0.55. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's somewhere around there is our local minimum. And our point of inflection is at 0.22, negative 0.22, so somewhere there. Okay, so my end behavior, remember, approaches positive infinity as x gets large. And as x approaches 0 from the left, the function actually approaches 0, but it's not actually going to ever reach there since the function is not defined. So we have a hole at x equals 0. Okay, and let's try to draw this as nicely as we can. So up until 0.22, the function is concave down, and then it becomes concave up. So let's try to draw it so that it looks concave down for that first portion, and then it becomes concave up with our minimum and our 0 and then goes to positive infinity. Okay, so you want to truly, really try to make an effort here to show that there's the downwards concavity. Okay, and that's what the uh, graph of the function lo should look like. That's it for this one.